Assalamu alaikum and Dien Dobre everyone. Yesterday's kutpa at uh, my local masjid was about zakat and it is the next in a series that the Imam was doing with regard to the first 10 ayat or verses of Surah Mu'minin and uh, the subject of uh, this ayat is zakat and how important it is. You can think of zakat as kind of like the income tax that we have here in the U.S. or you might have in your country if you're uh, viewing me from uh, outside the U.S. But it is mandatory on all Muslims who are financially capable of it and it has to be on certain types of wealth above a certain value and uh, you can go to zakat.org or uh, Islamic Finder Dot net and go to a link to zakat and you can learn about zakat how to calculate it what items you pay zakat on and I'll give you an example from my collection I have a small number of gold coins and I have a fair number of silver coins and I have a few pieces of uh, gold jewelry and a little bit of silver and I would pay zakat on those above a certain amount. And uh, zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam. And uh, you have to have all five pillars going. Although Hajj would be more difficult for some people if they are not financially able. Or for a sister who does not have an available mahram to go with her. Uh, like me. But anyway, uh, zakat is so important that if you do not have zakat in your heart, if you do not pay it, if you are financially able, not only are you committing a sin against yourself and Allah, you are committing a sin against those who would be the ultimate recipients of the zakat. And... Uh, that will leave a very black mark on your uh, record that will be shown to you on uh, the Day of Judgment when uh, you face Allah to determine whether or not you go to Jannah or you go to Jahannam, uh, Paradise or a Hellfire. But Zakat is so important that he said yesterday, if every capable Muslim paid the zakat, there would not be any poor Muslims. And right now I count myself among the poor because I am unemployed. I am currently living on government benefits, which are just barely enough to pay my bills. And uh, the only way right now I could get more more money to spend would be is if I were to sell my collections and uh, right now I do not want to sell them I want to hold on to them for a future need when I may even lose more resources so I will seek help in determining how much zakat I pay on this on my gold and silver and then I will uh, pay it and you can contact your local Imam at your masjid to determine where you can pay your zakat, how you do it and uh, other things like that whether you can do an online payment to a charity or you give it to the masjid or whatever uh, your Imam would tell you how to do it and uh, it uh, is usually paid either during Ramadan or at the end of Ramadan. But again, as a reminder to myself and everyone else, zakat is so important that it, without it, Islam is not complete. If you are not in a position where you pay zakat. If you do not have any 
assets above and beyond your normal means, then zakat is not obligatory on you, but you can still pay the other charity, which is sadaka, which would be something that you give a donation to, for instance, an organization that is providing relief to people who survived the earthquake in Haiti or in Chile or in other disaster areas or if you give it to your local masjid during a fundraiser. And uh, zakat is distributed by the Muslim community to the needy. It is given to those who are poor. For instance, if I had no money to buy food and I had used up my uh, meager food stamp balance, which is food stamp is a, an American government uh, food assistance program, and it's actually a card that I use to go buy food. And uh, if I lose that or if I lose the other government benefits have I have, I could go to my imam and explain my situation and then he could arrange for a charity payment to me so that I could pay a bill or buy food or something like that. There's more to it than that, but I'm just giving an example of what zakat does. It boosts the mom, the man of the poor because they are receiving the benefits of Allah given to them through another person. And if you pay your zakat with the intention that Allah desires, then you receive a reward also. You are blessed by Allah. Your your wealth is blessed. And uh, you can count that up as a good deed. And when you pay zakat, you have to use money that is from a halal source, whether it be from a job that is not in a haram business. For instance, you cannot use zakat from money that would pay be paid to you if you uh, sold a haram items such as uh, alcohol or uh, tobacco. You cannot pay zakat with uh, money earned from gambling because gambling is obviously haram. And you cannot pay zakat with money that is stolen from another person or another source. So the money that you use to pay zakat has to be from a halal source. And you, you have to have the intention of giving for the sake of Allah and for the help of the poor. Otherwise, if you pay it without that intention, as if you're doing it to show off, then you will not be rewarded for that. And that will be counted as a sin because that would be hypocrisy. So let us think about that. Let us remind ourselves to pay zakat if it is obligatory on you on those assets that you pay zakat on, which is gold and silver. And you can get assistance from zakat.org to calculate it based on the market price of your gold and silver. And you pay that to a charity or the masjid or whatever suggestion you get from your local imam. So remember, pay your zakat if you are obligated to do so and you have the financial means and do it with the intention of giving for the sake of Allah. And that was yesterday's uh, kutbah from uh, Juma, and uh, I hope this is a benefit of, for all of you. And uh, if I make an oops, it is from me only, and all good words are from Allah. Assalamu alaikum, Dovid Zenya, and Miaus Ramila.